Bell, I guess, uh, what was the, what do you feel like was the biggest offensive struggle in that second half? Only 16 points. Um, I feel like we tried to get, the, you know, they zoned us and we were switched up between zone and man. Um, and just switching, kind of figuring out, okay, they're matching up in a 3-2, so we need to go two guard front um, and kind of finding those gaps. I feel like that's something we're definitely still learning when it comes to just the spacing and reading space on the court. Because whenever we did get an opportunity to get to those open spaces and move, we made shots. Um, so just working on that this upcoming week. Um, the approach changed because their defense changed. Once they got out of their man, they played zone uh, basically the whole second half. Um, and like Bella said, we're still working on our offense in zone. So um, that's just kind of what happened. We couldn't pound it in on the inside um, because they were clogging it up. So um, we just got to knock down shots. Yeah. Dre, the uh, final shot, final couple shots, obviously saw Jada a little, a little emotional there towards the end. What was the message to her? and uh, what went wrong, I guess, on those possessions? Um, we just got to uh, execute, but um, nothing necessarily went wrong. Um, she did what Coach asked her to do, um, and we, me and Sage just kind of told her, you know, like we choose her over anybody any day. Um, she got to pick her head up. You know, we still got a lot of basketball game left uh, this season, so, you know, we need her a lot. So we just got to, you know, motivate her and tell her that, you know, we good. We go, we go to the next one. Um, it happened. It's over with, and we just learn from it and keep it pushing. Absolutely. Bill, especially in the second half there when the shots aren't falling, and, you know, that's been – that's happened a few times over the last few games. What do you tell yourself to keep your head in the game, and, and, and how, how frustrating is it in that moment to try to stay in it, you know? Um, in that moment, it's absolutely very frustrating. You know, people might say that I'm an emotional player, too. I think Dre knows that a little bit. She has to tell me um, to just, like, keep keep the next play mentality. But, you know, I feel like this year I've stepped into a bigger role defensively, so I try to, whenever my shots aren't falling and things aren't going my way on the offensive end, I try to step up and help. Um, maybe not vo in a vocal way, but help kind of be a leader on defense and be like, okay, I'm going to get a stop. I'm going to help get after it. I'm going to help on the teammate who needs help. Um, just things like that. Bella, what did you think the mood kind of was in the locker room after that? And what was the message that Nikki gave you guys? <clears throat> Just that we did, you know, we did a lot of good things. We had a really strong defensive effort. Um, she'll tell you that too. Our shots didn't fall. Um, we we definitely needed some more of those shots to fall in the second half. But you know, at the end of the day, we're gonna get back to, in the gym this week, um, work on attacking zone offenses, getting those better reads, open windows, open looks, because whenever we have that, we are really good at finishing those opportunities. So just getting back into that and finding our rhythm again. Uh, I know the past two games, uh, 20 turnovers in both. What, what, and it didn't seem like that was a problem, you know, first 14 games this season. What's kind of been the reason behind that struggle last few games? Um, I think teams are starting to, you know, um, be able to scout us better um, and know how to defend us. They have a lot of games to look at and a lot of film to look at to take away our um, advantages on offense. So I think um, we just got to keep working, getting, staying in the gym and, you know, um, Having those counter moves, having those um, when we drive and attack, the people are going to collapse on us. We have great uh, people that can attack the rim, so we got to see the open windows and we got to uh, figure out how to move um, when people are when, when our teammates are attacking and stuff. But yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. I'll also add to that. I think at times we're a little too unselfish. Um, like even the one in transition, I thought I had Yaya running with me, and I turned to drop it, and I said, wait, where'd she go? Right. Um, so just, just being okay with finishing ourselves sometimes as well, uh, but knowing that our teammates are still there for that extra look. Thank you all. Thank well, I guess, hey, why don't you talk about your offense? Yeah, let's talk about our Six, offense. 16 points in the second half, two for 14 yeah. from three. Well, was it something K-State did? They went zone. They went zone. They went zone midway through the second quarter. Um, I thought um, originally, like when they first went to it, we were, we were, we were scoring pretty easily against their man-to-man. -man. And 
you know, that, that's not a team that's used to team scoring against them. I mean, really, like they, they've just this, the final score was, was what they've done all year to teams and why they are where they are. Um, and, you know, I thought we did a good job early of we had some pace on our passes. Um, we made good decisions quickly in the high posts and got it down low. Um, in the second half, we just, I've got to solve, you know, my biggest, um, I got to figure out who I can put in the high post and make them a decision maker because the high post um, is the kill spot against the zone. And we just, we held it too long. Um, we didn't see where the help was coming from. We didn't play under them. You know, like I showed them film um, when we played K-State last year, when we played them here, um, Caitlin Bickle, I think, had a double-double um, with assists. She just caught it in the high post and just shredded them bounce passes to, to cutters, kick out passes for threes, um, you know, and, and just was a facilitator from the high post. And and uh, when they beat us last year, they played us all man. So we anticipated they might go zone if we played well against their man because they'd had. Um, but we just, we just didn't get quick decisions. We held the ball on one side too long. Um, honestly, their length really, really bothered us. Sundell and both Glens, um, Maupin, they, they, their length bothered us on the perimeter. We didn't do a good job of, of playing around them. And when we held it too long, they congested in their length. They, they go for the ball. Um, and we weren't getting any foul calls on kind of those 50-50 balls um, on Diggins. And I'm not saying they were. Um, I don't think, you know, we, we got enough free throws to win the game. We, we just didn't make them. Just talk about the final sequence. You, you had a couple threes there. What, what was it trying to do there? Yeah, well, <laughs> we knew, you know, originally um, they're a switching man-to-man -man team anyway, okay? So you anticipate when you know you got to take the three-point shot away that they probably were going to go man with 10 seconds to go. They also had three fouls to give. <laughs> so we knew um, when we got it in, they were probably going to grab us. So I had told Jada, so that no one thinks she was taking a crazy shot there, I had told her that if they raked her across the arm when she turned to, to shoot it, you know? And he was yelling foul. Everybody in the building knew that they were trying to foul. Um, and they didn't call it, you know, but, but it was actually a pretty smart play um, because when she turned, they, they instantly grabbed her. Um, and so it wasn't necessarily a bad decision um, because you know when someone reaches across your arm, that's, that's your chance. I mean, you don't see it a lot in college, but you certainly see it in the pros. Um, and, I mean, those guys are taught that the minute you put your hand over top of the ball to, to play up through it. So, uh, you know, and then we knew – three seconds on the baseline, you know, we were trying to, to mess with their switch, uh, which we did. I mean, Dre was wide open, but wide open under the basket. So um, right away, as soon as she screened, we didn't, we shouldn't have thrown it to her. You know, I think that's your, your reaction. Jada's reaction is like, oh, wow, she's open. Let me throw it to you. Uh, it doesn't do you much good to throw it to you under the basket when you need a three. So she needed to screen and sprint back to the arc when they left her. They sent two to Yaya. Um, but we didn't need to be in that situation. We put ourselves in that situation to be in a one-position game without enough time. A coach in the back, where, where do you kind of go from here to change the turnover numbers and just to kind of secure the ball a little better? Yeah, good question. Um, not dribbling into trouble, chin in the ball when you catch it, squaring up, um, not trying to do too much. Some of the turnovers were, I will say this, um, some of the turnovers were, um, Kansas State does a really, really good job of sitting on the drift pass, and we're a very, very good drive and drift team. And it's not because they were playing us, they're really good on the drift against everybody. Um, and we didn't have enough ball movement. So we need to give our ball handlers outlets when they put the ball on the floor. Now, we need to have a plan. And I think one of our biggest problems was when we attacked tonight, we didn't attack to score, we attacked to pass. And that was probably our biggest problem because I thought there was three separate occasions where we drove in there, had a layup, and turned it over um, trying to kick it 
when we needed to score the basketball. So we got to see the rim first. Um, and I thought we turned down layups um, to, to throw the drift pass. And maybe we play, we're playing behind the basket in the short, um, but you got to get your body angled, whether it's a reverse layup or just power dribble. Um, but, you know, I just think they sat on those passes. Um, we, we've got to be more decisive. We've got to know when we can spin and when we can't. You can't spin in the lane um, against a team like this with length. Um, but, you know, Maupin was a superstar tonight. You know, like I, I just, her three in the corner, I mean, that's the shot we were willing to give up. Um, she sticks that, it rolls all the way around. She shot great from the foul line. She grabbed four offensive rebounds. Like we just, she was a pogo stick out there. Um, and she finished everything at the rim. And, and when we didn't do a good job guarding our yard and got beat, um, either we didn't rotate or our rotation was too early and we had no second layer of rotation. Um, and, and I think um, one of the reasons why Kansas State is so good defensively is because they're a ball control team on offense. Okay, so like if you look at their pace or how many possessions are in a game, you don't get nearly as many possessions because they, they run offense. And whether it's with Lee and they work the ball side to side and and throw it inside or without her, they're a four out, five out, pass, cut, screen, keep moving. Um, but then they wear you down. They wear you down. And so when you grab a defensive rebound, you're just happy you escaped that possession and we had no pace. So we just got nothing in transition. And I thought early when we got some things in transition, we avoided contact. You know, I thought Jada went there and there and avoided once. I thought Sarah drove in and avoided. Um, we, we started to get better offensively when we took it in and, and played through their chest and got to the foul line. Um, so we just had a lot of possessions tonight. We couldn't, we couldn't take advantage. Um, you know, Jada usually turns those steals into points. We, we just didn't create any momentum baskets. And then um, right or wrong, I think it was a huge momentum turn when they called the intentional foul. Um, so, I mean, that was a big one. Nikki, stand back here. Uh, you got y'all have been lucky enough to be on the winning side of the first four top 25 matchups. Mm -hmm. uh, this is obviously the first first loss. Why does this one sting a little bit more than the rest? I mean, you came in and said, said dang. Um, yeah, we were up at nine and a half. I mean, we were up nine and a half. That's why. Um, you know, I think we had the home court. You, you, we only get them once this season. Um, you know, I think we did a lot of things right in the first half. I thought we started the game, and we were in, we were hacking the heck out of them and, and not communicating on D, um, but scoring. But we, we, we kind of figured things out, and then our defense just really, really got good, I thought, as the first half went along. And our offense was steady, and we just – you know, I thought Dre's quick foul in the third really hurt us. Uh, we got to be more disciplined on people's shot fakes. I thought any time they looked at the rim, we, we got up in a stance, um, you know, and, and, and they made us pay. Um, so it just, like, we lost, we lost momentum. You know, I, I, thought, I thought we had really, really good moments from our bench. You know, I thought Jana hit a couple of big shots. I thought she was solid. Um, defensively, like there was, there probably wasn't a situation one time tonight where I said, "Oh wow, well they took advantage of Jana." Um, you know, they they certainly got to us on Gregory uh, with the switches. You know, we we got to get loose from her and get around. Uh, we got to bring help quicker. I mean, we we made some decisions um, late. I thought they made better plays late than we did. Obviously, um, their transition D was better than ours, but I just don't think that that we were able to play with any tempo. Um, you know, and, and they, they played Saturday, too, and traveled. So we, we've got no excuses. We pay, played our bench um, as much as we've played it in the last month. So we, we really didn't have any excuses for, like, why we looked like the more tired team. Coach, after this, you know, four-game stretch, you know, I know you're, you're not going to say the sky is falling, but moving forward, you know, like, how much adjusting do you make? Do you make any adjustments to, you know, rotations or lineups or any of that fun stuff? How much tinkering are you going to do before Oklahoma State? Mm. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, if you know me well, I don't, I don't uh, make rash decisions. Um, it's just not who I am. 
Um, I don't ch change lineups to change lineups. Um, you know, I think it's, you know, I, I thought we got really good stuff out of Yaya in the first half. Um, I thought she was driving into congestion without a plan. You know, we've, we've got to, like, really get her to understand spacing and zones. we got to get Jada to understand spacing and zones. Like, you know, Bugs is such a recipient score. She's really, really, really good against zones when she's got someone um, in the high post that can kind of find her on cuts because she's probably our best cutter against zones. And we just, you know, we haven't, we haven't found that person yet, you know, that's just going to really – um, you know, and, and I got to tinker. That might be a guard. You know, we might have to put a guard in there um, and, and keep two posts low. Um, you know, I just – it all goes back to, like, <laughs> we, wouldn't be, we wouldn't be talking about this if we'd have just made foul shots. You know, like, we, we wouldn't be here. And I know they can say the same thing, but, like, we're a good foul shooting team. Like, this is – you know, so this was not us. And um, – and I want to say we're not a turnover team, but we've been turning the ball over. So, you know, we, we definitely have to, to go back and see, like, we're, we're over. Like, you got to swing the ball against the zone. The ball got stuck. I felt like every time we caught the ball, and I mean this about everyone on our team, we were making slow decisions. We weren't reading the two-on-one on, on the backside. We were holding it one dribble, then moving it. Um, and then their length could recover. So we, we just didn't do a good enough job of, of moving it. So we, we've just got to get better against zones because we're going to see them. Oklahoma State plays a lot of man, but they also play 2-3 zone. And, and they're probably going to play a zone because I would if I watched this. So I don't make any rash decisions. I'm going to go recruiting. I'm going to watch a lot of film. We're going to take a day off, and we're going to get better on, on Wednesday. Nikki, I know that uh, Bugs had the two early fouls. You talked about maybe players weren't hitting her on the cut, but was this just not a good matchup for her? Yeah, I mean, I think um, – You know, she's, she's someone that excels in transition. She's someone that excels on the offensive glass, um, cuts, slips, you know. Like, she would have been fine against their man. She was fine against their man. Then she got – she picked up the fouls. Um, against zone, um, you know, she's, she hasn't made a three since she's been at Baylor. Um, you know, I think she can make a 15-footer, but she missed the ones that, that she got today. Um you know, I thought we had a really good pass to her that I think she had a right-handed layup, and she kind of, like, pump faked and, and shot a little turnaround. Like, I think she turned the layup into a tougher shot. And I know why she did it. She got to balance. She took her time. Um, but those are the kind of plays she makes. Um, but, you know, she's not going to attack a zone. She's not going to attack a zone from the high post. Um, you know, she's just kind of better working short corners. If she's in the high post, if we'd gotten the ball to short, she's really good diving and playing and finishing. Um, you know, but, I mean, if you're not making – she wasn't the only one not making jump shots, you know. I mean, but it's it's just not – it's not her strength. So, you know, it was like trying to play and, and stretch them out so that we could get action in the middle. I mean, there were lineups that I had just saying – like, I was searching – for people to make shots, you know, just like, and and that's where Jana made one. I thought Danae turned down some open shots and, and you know, turned them into, and they, they, they became less good shots. Um, but I didn't think Danae played poorly. I just thought she had some open shots that she turned down and then we never got to a better shot. So, um, you know, we gotta get Sarah going. When is Sarah shot like this? I, mean, I don't know how many games in a row this is. Um, but, you know, I think if there's a common denominator, and I don't, I don't think Sarah's played poorly. In fact, I think um, at Iowa State, at Kansas in this game, um, even when she didn't make shots against UCF, I don't think her floor game hasn't been good. I don't think her defense has been solid. I think her leadership has been good. She's not making shots, you know, and I think – we need her to make threes. She's our best three-point shooter. I mean, she is our best three-point shooter, and, and we need her to make shots. And and so we got to get her back in the gym, and she's got to see that thing go in. And I just always believe the next one's going to go, and, and we got to get her to think that way um, because I think tonight would have been different too. Like, I think 
even with her, I thought she turned down some that if she was shooting well, she, she would have taken, you know? And, and so I think there's like, there's like the want to, I want to make this, I know my team needs it versus like that rhythm, like ready to shoot it. Um, you know, I thought Jana was our most ready to shoot tonight. You know, I thought she was our most ready when she caught it to shoot the basketball. Um, I thought Yaya double clutched a lot when she caught it and was open. And uh, I thought Bella, I mean, Bella only got two threes, but I thought Bella was really, really solid. Thank you.